a lot of pressure on us. They put a pressure on our line out, but we found a way. Somehow we found a way. People that are not from South Africa don't understand what this means for our country. You know, it's not it's not just about the game on the field. You know, our country goes through such a lot, and we are bearing hope that they have. You know, and and this team just shows what diversity can do for our team. You know, for for our country as well. As soon as we work together, all is possible. No matter in what we are, you know, on the field, in offices, it just shows for for, for what we can do there. And I'm grateful for this team. I'm so proud of it. Hi, Tim Mbulele. I love comment. Top of the year six on the Mighty Metro FM. Welcome to it. Thanks so much to the turn. Even Lawrence is laughing. Ah. <laughs> you know, I wanted to come in with the with, with the hang, man, with the bang. Mm. Hmm? I was like, no, Timmy. I want to come in after, you know, just speaking of the great victory at the time that the whistle went. Ah, Timmy, you killed me. Ah, you killed me, Timothy. You killed me. Top of the R6. Welcome to it. It is Bok Day official. Yesterday we gave it a skip because we knew they'd be arriving today. Were you at the airport today? Did you go? Talk to me. Let's hear all about it on uh, 86 2160 We're going to be celebrating the box. Of course, Lawrence, who's been here with us throughout the box. Um, tenure out in France. Every single Tuesday, we've gathered here for Rugby Tuesdays to speak about all things rugby. This is a combination of all of that. This is that one day when we say we're celebrating. Where were you when you watched? You were in studio, obviously. You were sitting in studio with Peter de Villiers um, and Conrad Yankees as well. We were stressing there, and basically, for some reason, maybe we've gone through the two stresses, the Conrad and the Semis. This one was sort of preparing, those two sort of prepared you for the last one. You had that sense like these guys were not stressing, and the mere fact the way they started was a house on fire. Like, listen, there's no way they can lose this game the way they play. Because that was a definitely a Springbok team that we call customer use coming house. I mean, when they come out, they come like a <laughs> turn on bricks on someone. I mean, spit the step to toy. Remember how you used to criticize him at some point, like there's something missing with this mm. one. But he was leading the charge. I mean, timing, perfect tackling. It was on point. It was absolutely amazing to watch them operate like that. That's why that was the easing factor that, listen, whatever the score is, you don't care. But this performance, we can live with. All right. Uh, you heard top of the hour there. It was uh, Zolama Javu. Um, sentencing all kinds of chiefs uh, to the lockout. But we'll cover that tomorrow. We'll cover that tomorrow. Today is all about the box. Today we're celebrating the spring box. They came back to South Africa. Sia coming out of that terminal with the trophy in hand and the thousands that had come out there. It was such beautiful uh, images to see and to watch. And I still say, you know, and, and, and perhaps it's a good thing that I have you here, Lawrence, because the guys have just come back. They've been away, what, a month? Uh, just over a month. Well, yeah. Just over a month. Uh, if, you, if you put into perspective the fact that they left South Africa, they went um, to Twickenham, they went to all these places before they even went to France, okay. it's probably just under two months. Yes, and if not two months at all together. Remember, they're also away from home and they were in Cape at some point, just getting those final touches going and then off they went. So you can actually round it up to about two months away from home. And then when you look at how difficult those games were, uh, especially the three last games. Absolutely difficult. Play to the very last minute. Concentration on a high. And then the next day after they won was the awards, of course. Guys had to get ready. Uh, couldn't celebrate much the previous night because they had to go to the awards. And then the next day, fly back to South Africa. They land here after a long, long trip. Um, there's interviews. There's what we saw at the airport. And my heart bleeds for Venda more than anything because the visuals and what I saw in Venda, I think... I think they deserve to see their spring box. But I also understand, and perhaps you could put into perspective as well, how tired those boys must be. It's very it's very complicated. And if you consider the few effect as well, remember these are professionals who play in various leagues. Remember some of the European leagues they actually have started before the World Cup was even over. You can imagine how bad it bad. They are waiting for their players they've signed up for the new season to come back very quickly. Although they understand they need to give them a break one or two weeks or so. So remember now having to juggle that now. Rest, parade, slash a bit of family time if they're staying back here or maybe they're not traveling with or they're traveling with. That whole family time as well that they also need to just find their feet again, obviously get that family thing going. It is complicated, but it's the nature of the beast. They play for professional uh, sport and that's a requirement at times. But I think they just could have organized this a lot better. Give, oh, well, I suppose they're on the high. They won't be as tired physically or emotionally because they're on the high or natural high of winning a World Cup. Uh, that one wouldn't be a problem. But in terms of physical tiredness, 
they need to rest at some point and I don't know how they're going to juggle that one out because remember South Africa's got nine provinces we thought at least they'll try nine provinces mm. even spend a day our workers jump spend no, a day jump no, no, spend a day surely, you know? <laughs> surely would, uh, that, no surely wouldn't be fair but give us a call today's about you and your spring box it's 16 about to go 17 after the hour 6 the other conversation we've got to have and it's an important one. Yes, we're celebrating. Yes, they've done it two in a row. Four now. We've set all the records. Uh, Rene Swart is going to be joining us. I'm not sure if he's in already. Uh, do we have Rene? Oh, there we go. We've got Rene. Rene? Rene? All right, we're gonna... Oh, there we go. How are you, Mr. Swart? I'm very well in yourself. Hey, man, we're glad to have you here to finish off this journey that we've walked together. Renier Swart, of course, uh, SABC Sports Rugby commentator on radio and on television. He's the man that has uh, been giving it to South African in any and every language they want. Renier, I haven't spoken to you since the victory on Saturday. Um, you know, and uh, unfortunately, we couldn't capture your commentary because I thought it was so brilliant um, and would have loved to hear you on the air here. But uh, it wasn't recorded enough for us to get, to get it and play it out for people out there. It was absolutely brilliant brilliant how are you feeling since the victory uh i am I'm, I'm i'm feeling much better than what i felt after the after the semi-final uh i think we 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 are just celebrating and and after after the victory it was it was an amazing feeling i can just imagine what those players feel uh when we were just commentating on what they did and and how this victory just went down in South Africa, like um, it, I'm 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 humble, but I'm still I'm so happy for for South Africa and for the box uh, for what they did. It's it's really uh, amazing. How big is this? I mean, the first is always going to be a huge one, wasn't it? Uh, 95 is always going to be absolutely massive. You were there. You commentated in that final um, against the All Blacks. When you look at this one. The fourth one, the All Blacks again, you get to do the final commentary. How big was this one in comparison? It was it was immense. It was it was really big because uh, you know in in ninety five when we commentated ninety five there were still a lot of people who didn't who didn't really follow the rugby uh, that much. Uh, I think this time, because of us already being the world champions that happened in 2019, the build-up to this World Cup for South African, for the normal South African on the street, was just very much bigger. Uh, I think what also what happened is that the media played a big role uh, in promoting the game of rugby towards all the listeners and all the all the people of South Africa, and that made it even bigger. Um, so that the support for for the team this time around was just uh, you you can't imagine how big the support really was uh, for the team, much bigger than what it was in '95. '95 it was a it was a new thing. It was a, a nitty. We won the World Cup. It, yes, it, it joined us together. It, it raised the, 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 the importance of sport within uh, a society and building a society. This time around, it even went further. It, it didn't just bond us together. We are, we, it, it showed that we can stand together and we can support our, our, our box. Look at, look at when, when there, were, there were some bad critics uh, towards, Bo towards Bongi and Bonambi. The whole of the country, doesn't matter who it was, 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 even if he did something wrong, even if he may have said something wrong, nobody wanted to, to hear that. Everybody was saying, no, we're behind the box. The box are, are doing well. You guys are right there. So it, it was just a, a total difference from 95. Uh, although the victory was just as big, uh, it, it, it was just a total difference with the different people in South Africa who now support rugby. It was an introduction, wasn't it? Because it was definitely my introduction to rugby back in 1995 as uh, Indwana says Lalini. And I was as Lalini at the time when that went down. You've mentioned one moment, which is, of course, uh, uh, the Mongimbo Nambi thing. But there's got to be huge moments in and around the last month or so. We're going to get into Lawrence. He's going to tell us his two or three. I'm going to come back to you, Renier, with uh, one or two of those. And then I want us to look forward. Because obviously with this celebration came a bit of a dampener, but also um, maybe an opportunity. We are now without Jacques, um, and, and not Jacques, sorry, without our Ninaba, right? And uh, we, need to, we need to figure out what we then do moving forward without Ninaba. Is it an opportunity and an opportune time perhaps to have our very first own black Springbok coach? What do we think of 
the next man possibly in line can only think of one is it an opportune time for coach Nina but to hand over the baton to a man that he's worked with hand in hand is this the time we get our first black springbok coach Let's have that conversation when we come back. And of course, uh, taking some of your calls and voice notes as well. Anybody that was in Durban, Umtang, at a place called 14th, I am sorry I stood on top of the tables. I am sorry I made the noise I made. Ay! I'd love to hear your experiences uh, as to where you were on Saturday evening. Like I said, I was uh, in Umtang. Uh, I was working out in Durban. I'd just gone to the Kaiser Chiefs. Malcolm is laughing at me. I'd gone to the Kaiser Chiefs uh, uh, Golden Arrows game, Golden Arrows Kaiser Chiefs game a little bit earlier came back to the hotel and everything was booked out you couldn't go anywhere um there's a restaurant i eat at all the time i think it's called 414 or something so i went down there and it was packed it was packed so they found a chair and put it right <laughs> under the tv channel <laughs> like right under a tv so the whistle is gone yo did i not get up on top of that chair yeah I they will forgive you for that i know they'll have to forgive me <laughs> i'm terribly sorry for what i did to your establishment <laughs> Standing on chairs that people must sit on to eat, but no, I was on top of tables. No, listen, I think uh, I actually might have shed some tears in that process as well, but uh, being the sneaky person that I am, no one actually picked it up. That was an emotional moment because... Oh, you cried. I'm, I'm telling you, you can't let a big man be seen crying, but you can tell him afterwards you did. Because it was an emotional moment because for the mere fact what it meant... A lot of people always perceived All Blacks in South Africa as a great rivalry. Mm. But the expectation is always All Blacks are going to win. Hmm. And the fact that we went in there, guns blazing, and they threw the kitchen sink at us, although they threw Route 14, but uh, 14 men on the field, but they still threw the kitchen sink with us. Absolutely. I, I mean, kudos. I mean, the they deserve an applause to New Zealand because to do what they did, with 14 men. Because think about when they, how early it is that they got that red. Uh, the yellow then, of course, overturned to a red. It was crazy that they were able to be that strong, nearly take it from us. And they've got themselves to blame for a large part as well. Because, you know, have they converted everything as well? We'd be speaking something completely different here. You have to give kudos to how no, well I, they did. I, I did. It's like, listen, man, now heads to the All Blacks that, first of all. And if you look at those states as well, the states are saying totally different thing to what is the final scoreboard is saying because they all dominated most of the first plays and obviously how they kept the ball around. I think their biggest mistake as well was to probably keep it too tight, meet us two to two. They never win that battle. They know that for now. But they realized that, listen, this is not working. Just throw the thing around because I think we've got a plan. And I think the key moment for me, besides them kicking those kicks, remember that's natural. Uh, and it's the nature of the beast. Sometimes you make mistakes. And uh, the parents have been very good with the kicking the whole tournament. Even um, the five missed one conversion. So you calculate those. Then you take us back what happened to us against Ireland. We left 11 points in the field. Mm. Because just, just. Mm. They left about four or five points in the field. They lost the game. At the end of the day, you know, sometimes luck has got a lot to do or hard you work. And obviously, I think the key moment as well for me, that the yellow card to Chess and Kobe. I think it was one of those yellow cards that needed to happen. If you notice who are standing outside to receive that pass <laughs> from the inside, it was going to be devastating. One on one with Vali Leroux, I could see just flames after that. But when he did what he did, I was going to actually listen, man, take this with pride and actually frame it if you can, because that was key moment. And obviously for that eight minutes, probably the longest time I've seen Chesa and Kobe probably pray. For eight minutes long. Yeah, no shame. Uh, had had we lost that, he was going to be devastated with himself. Absolutely. Uh, with that being said, Ranir, what are some of your key moments? I mean, I think about this World Cup. I think about um, the charge down. I think that's going to be one of the uh, of, of the big moments for me. Like uh, 10 years from now when I speak about it, I'm going to say Charles and Kobe and that charge down is going to be absolutely amazing. It's going to be epic. It's going to be the picture of this World Cup for me. What about you, Ranir? What, which, which moments would you take from this World Cup that stand out for you that you can see as a poster being framed in the same way we've got that drop kick that's framed in many houses in South Africa from 95? Uh, no, there, there's there's nothing standing out like the like the charge down. The charge down was just something uh, that was tremendous in our whole victory walk towards the World Cup. 
or towards the final. Uh, that that will stand in the minds of, of people for, for many years, I think. Uh, but I, I just want to, before I answer the rest of the, the questions of the standout moments, you said that you, you stood on a table, uh, on a chair. Uh, myself, <laughs> we, we sit down and do commentary, and that last eight minutes, uh, I think at some stage my eyes were also closed when Scott is when Tuzeli Scott is busy I, I really couldn't watch the TV uh, we were standing and, and it, uh, unfortunately myself and um, Lawrence we couldn't stand on chairs because we, <laughs> spot, but we, would have, we would have stood on chairs I can promise you uh, it, was, it was so uh, nice but coming back to the, the, the moment that will ever last for me is when we beat France when we beat France with a child down the whole thing, that whole shivers that we had in that specific game. I think the the other two games were good. Uh, also winning with one point, but that one of, of France was yeah. something that stood out for me, and and it will stand out. Uh, the whole play of that day, uh, mm. the Elizabeth try, uh, uh, the, the, the the whole uh, thing. I'm I'm saying it. Don't don't mean the cheat Elizabeth try. The, the it's a bit try. No, yeah, Elizabeth. Uh, and, uh, Elizabeth. <laughs> <laughs> and 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 the whole thing, you know, what we spoke about before uh, in a program that we did uh, on this rugby, mm. uh, in that uh, rugby won that day, yeah, and not votes. Uh, with the whole thing of France buying the vote, South Africa not having the 2023 <laughs> World Cup on our, on our soil, uh, that rugby night rectified was it. Mm. The, what, rugby was the one that won that night, and and that made me jubilate like no. I, I felt that night as if we already won the World Cup, uh, yeah. because it, it was such a it was such an amazing day and and game that that that's the big standout moment for in, in this whole World Cup. No, I agree. Because that's possibly the, the best match for me uh, as well. Com, coming to the final, I was also worried. Uh, I think uh, the first half went so well for South Africa in that we tried to play in their half, uh, saw that they make the mistakes uh, and that we get those penalties with, with Pollard he, having his, 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 his kicking shoes on. Uh, I think things went very well. But I was, I was also worried when that first kick hit the left upright and just if it, if it hit it about an inch to the, to the left more, it wouldn't have been over. Uh, it actually deflected from the post. And the next penalty kick was just this close. And I thought, oh, oh this man is pulling it all to the left tonight, to the left. What is going to happen when, it, when we get to the far kicks? And that was also a, a bit of a worrying factor, but they pulled it right. Um, the second half, as, as Lawrence has also said, they dominated us in a lot of plays. With 14 men, we must take our hats off for them. Mm. They played really well, good rugby. And when, when Adi Savia got the, 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 the player of the, 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 the world player of the year. I wasn't feeling bad, not even bad for Italy. Really, he deserved it. He, he, he deserved in that game that he played. I've never seen eighth man play as good as that game when he played against Ireland. He was like, he was like all over. Uh, he was, he, I want to say he was like Peter Steph de Trouy was in the final. Uh, but he was just very good and in, in the game now against South Africa. There were a few mistakes, but he was he, he, he did really well. And our hats off for New Zealand. Yes, they didn't win the World Cup. We are the champions, New Zealand. You must realize that. Uh, <laughs> but we, well, they, they were key moments in there that, that may, had us all worried and standing on chairs, definitely. Another moment uh, that uh, will stand out has to be that no-look kick. Oh, how, How do forget we forget that? the no-look <laughs> kick? What? The no-look kick? It must have been the stress moments after that. <laughs> <laughs> Renier, how do you forget the no-look kick? <sighs> the no-look kick we can't forget as well. From Manny Libok. From Manny Libok, yes. That was, it, it was in the game against Scotland. It was. And it was one of the best no-look no -look kicks that I've ever seen in my life. I don't think I've ever seen as good one. Uh, uh, he, look, Manny Lebok is, is good. He's, he's going to be a star in South Africa for many years to come. Uh, so, so yes, no, that was also a standout moment, definitely. Lawrence, for you, standout moment. Well, like I said, there's so many for me. I think uh, you mentioned Lebok, 
uh, because now you have to pick individuals and sort of make it a oop, let it shine a little bit there. Mm. I think Ox, uh, the turnaround strategy when he came on against England was probably the key one that actually turned things around. And obviously, how can you forget that final kick from Pollard himself to actually settle us, confirm us that, listen, we need to go to the final. No other team would have given uh, New Zealand a pedigree to ponder, uh, or to ponder on in terms of a final game. Otherwise, New Zealand would have probably just taken the cup and walked home. And uh, certainly that one, that's for me, that actually confirmed those moments. And like, obviously, and as a collective of individuals that have come and shown up their skills at points that we're desperately needing them. But for me, I think that team, the mere fact they could find a way when nothing was possible. You talk about Cheslin Kobe when the lights were dimming and he sparked something from behind and the ESCOM was back things started going again. So you can count those moments if they can just put them together and make a reel. That will actually just play a mm. couple of weeks with that for those who can't get to the thing. Just give them that as well. It will be actually quite exciting. And we have to give credit to the two coaches, Jacques Nienaber as well as Rassi. Simply for one reason. We sat here in studio, here as well, um, in conversations when we're talking about the replacement that needed to come, who the replacement would be, why the replacement was important. And not a lot of people agreed with Andre Pollard coming in because it was said, no, man, guys, the shit had a, it was a stroke of genius now that you think about it. It was an absolute stroke of genius now that you think about what's happened since he came on. Absolutely. Because actually, if you think about it as well, as well because it was not about just the rugby player himself, but the kind of qualities he came with, experience, Leadership. Leadership. You cannot buy that. You cannot get it from a youngster. Because anything that goes wrong in a youngster's head... The 100 uh, Pollard thing on its own is a movie. You know what I mean? And then basically, you exactly... I think they. we need to give it to them because we actually had our questions about it, but we didn't have questions about the motive why they wanted him in the mix. It was mm. unfortunate that he got injured. He was part of the mix. I mean, they said they started planning in, in, in six years ago. So clearly it was a big part of the plan. Like in rugby, you cannot confirm a day after the other because injuries happen. And exactly what happened is an injury. But their plans was still including Pollard in the process. He probably wouldn't have been an incumbent if it was not injured. Mm. But like the blessing in disguise happened and Libo came along and showed us something different as well. I mean, that's the next general now to take over. If, uh, uh, what's his name, Pollard decided to let listen, I retire, I can move on. I've won two World Cups. I'm good, let a new generation just kept take this bed and further, but he still probably still got some something left in the tank. And every sharing in new players are that gonna come into the system. There's a new coach that's gonna come, but hopefully, the not a lot is gonna change. I think wherever they go there as well, they need to start internally. When someone externally comes in, he needs to be sort of roped into their system, how they operate. Remember, we can't come in there and throw the whole plan outside. And then that's what normally happens with our coaches. New coach comes in and lays down the whole plan, what he would like to achieve. But no, you can't just throw out the whole thing. You must look at what worked, what didn't work, and just make some tweaks and go forward. But hopefully those players, most of them are going to be part of that big picture. It's 1837. You've already started the conversation on the coaching thing. So we're going to get into it now. Let's take a quick break. When we come back... We speak about the future of the Springboks. Yes, it's all great. We're celebrating right now. But this is the best team in the world. This is the best team in the world over a long period of time. How do we sustain this moving forward with a new coach? The conversation we're about to have is not a transformation conversation. Because uh, I think a lot of people think, yeah, there we go again. An opportune time to speak transformation. No. This by no means is a transformation conversation. Because the person that we are suggesting as a possible next in line would not be a pick of transformation. He's got the experience. He's been there. Why not? I'd love to hear from the two gents. Welcome to it. It's exactly 1840 on the Mighty Major Fame. In about five minutes, we'll get into conversations with you when we play your voice notes as well as take your calls. WhatsApp on 60 7303 Call on 86 Renier, before I even go to you, Let's play a couple of these clips. This is uh, Sia Kulisi paying tribute to Jacques Ninaba. Right, while we find that, because uh, it's on there somewhere, uh, just to get a hold of it, where's Timmy? While you get a hold of it, there's also, you know, what Ninaba had to say about the next chapter and his legacy as well. I'd love for you to hear all of that. And uh, at the back of that, we get into conversations about um, what we think is next. 
I've worked with Jock since I was 17 years old. I couldn't tackle. When him and Rasi used to come to training, we had to play full contact. We had to show them that, you know, you can do this. So, and since then, how he used to motivate us in games, how we grew around him. Myself, Eve in France, and Stephen Kitov, Peter Steff, we all played together other Jock. And I said last week, like, how he cared about us as people. He, he took it further. And then it, when he speaks to me, he asked me, are you going to let Kezia down, my daughter? Are you going to let your son down, Nicholas? It became far deeper than just a rugby game. So, Chuck, I wanna honestly, it's it's been a huge honor for me and a huge privilege. I, I appreciate you. We love you as a team, not as a coach, but as a person. You've you've taken to another and the way you speak to us, you know, you talk to me as a father, as a husband, as a son. I'm really grateful for you and it goes such a long way for a player. So thank you and we honor you uh, as a team and I hope that you're proud of us and yeah, all the best where you're going. They'll be lucky to have you wherever you are, wherever you go. Well, that is uh, Sia Kulisi there paying tribute to his coach. Let's move on now to Nin Abr speaking about his legacy. The Sia that I made when he was 18 is still the Sia that he is now. And the, the Cheslin that I made when he played fullback, uh, a lot of them went on to play sevens, Justin Geduld, and uh, those boys, they could step. So he's never changed. Uh, the fame never got to them. They, they, never go, they never became entitled. So I think that's the legacy they will leave, you know. Well, and here he is now speaking about the next chapter. I'm moving on to a next next chapter and only a next chapter um, for 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 a couple of years uh, and like I mentioned nobody knows how it's going to go uh, forward life life has its own way how how he deals with it and then he speaks uh, about how you'll never walk away from the Springboks I don't think I'm walking away I'll never walk away from Springboks the Springboks have given me everything hmm. lastly Ninaba saying hopefully I'll be back. You'll never know. Hopefully, I'll be back. But um, uh, yes, again, the players, the players make you you nothing. Cl- coaches are nothing without players. Uh, they are everything. Yeah, you can hear the emotion in that. Um, but let's get into it now, James. He's done a great job. They've been a great duo, in fact. But let's look forward now. How do we look forward? Yo, I think at this point in time, I was actually saying the whole time now, post the game, you know, it's uh, it's going to be cloud nine for some time. And I think I know the, the, the executive is probably pondering some plans in terms of moving forward, which makes Razi Rasmus part of the executive because he needs to make executive decisions or be part of the executive decision. Who's the next person taking the bait and now taking it forward? Uh, I mean, he's going to be there for a while, obviously, to see that process go in as well. If he also doesn't plan on leaving, maybe decide to stay even further to just foresee the, the Springbok future, just the direction they're not getting lost in the in the process of going forward. And then obviously we're all thinking about, uh, I mean, he has to look, the national team, Sari has to look internally first. One of those coaching, you know, teams, that work with Jack and uh, Erasmus with the whole campaign from when he started uh, as a director of rugby, SA Rugby. One of those guys could be like the candidate without even putting it out there for coaches are interested. Those who probably put in their CVs and say, listen, this looks good. Come fit in into our processes this is, because this is a process. Now we need to tweak this process and go forward with it because you need to improve. You can't be stagnant. You need to keep good. People are going to come chasing. So it's very important. I cannot see that they put someone brand new from outside to come in, but it has to be someone that's inside that's going to be elevated and obviously support the uh, sort of. You're saying a lot, but inside. you're saying nothing. Who, who, who's that person? No, no, there's only two guys at the moment who I who? think are eligible are Dion Davids and uh, Zandi Lestik. In, this, in the system that is eligible to actually take one the, that position because they have to decide who between the two. Remember, they started uh, simultaneously together as a forward and backs coach uh, with the system that actually, I mean, maybe Mzwandi a bit further because it was with Tuti as well. I put a team, Davis was there as well. So it makes no sense. Why not pick one of those and they can decide? Remember, it's a team effort now. They've mastered the art of a coach not being an I-man, being a, a team man going forward. I mean, uh, Jack and obviously Razi, you barely hear them say, I made a decision. I did this. I did this. Always we, we, collective, collective this. Even leadership, they've changed the direction of leadership. They actually have a captain, but there's like a permit of leadership beneath Sia Kulisi, who could have taken up any, I mean, they've a couple of captains created within a term Garcia Colisi, that actually got an opportunity <coughs> to fill that seat and feel how it feels. And there was no animosity, there was no jealousy. Guys were supportive of each other in that process. I mean, what changes with the coaches? Renier Swart, your thoughts, the next coach of the Springboks. 
And he, I'm, I'm sorry, I couldn't hear the, 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 the what 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 Sia said and what uh, Gina was said. I mean, it was just it was just uh, a Sia paying right. tribute to Jacques and telling him how amazing it's been to him and and, and the team. And it was Jacques saying thank you, um, you know, and 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 speaking about his time there and how the players have made him uh, who he is. Um, and he walks away from this, but he'll never walk away from the Springboks, and he hopes to one day be back. That's generally what he said. What do you think of the future of the Springboks as far as captain, as, as coaching is concerned? Well, I want to say something that's very important that that, that was in this World Cup specifically. You know, uh, the, the words, there were two words that disappeared in totality from the, our followers or from the rugby supporters. And those two words were transformation and quotas. It was totally, you never heard somebody saying that Bongi Mbonambi or Sia Kulisi or Lukanyo Am or Makasola uh, Mapimpi uh, or any one of these people were quoted players. Everybody said they are there because of their capabilities. And this is where I want to start my conversation on the coach. The coach's capability is is the important one. And I, I heard what, what, what Lawrence said. Uh, in my view, the next coach for South Africa who will be the best, and that is my prediction and my view, is Zandilistic. In in no uh, more words than that, he's the guy who running South Africa or the the team. He's a man that came in. He was a sevens player. He was the captain of the sevens team. When he came in at the first time, he went into the back road uh, training. He was in the background. He he, he did the back uh, the, the the training of the backs. He did a wonderful job. Everything went smooth. He, he got a lot of experience out of this. And if you clearly look at the last year's news conferences, all of them, Mzondinistik is pushed is pushed forward. Not Nina but doing the, the, the news conference, not uh, 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 Rassi doing the news conference, but Mzondinistik. Mzondinistik has been built, and he's there because of his capability. And I will be a happy chappy if Mzondinistik becomes the, the, the next uh, coach of South Africa, and I think he deserves it. Uh, it's not a question of transformation. It's not a question of quota. It's a question of, of his capabilities. And he was. Are you saying the, he's he the best available the man teams. right now for Team South Africa? He's, he's the best guy to coach South Africa right now. Uh, in my view, we've got other names. We've got Van Gron, who's a very good coach, where he is. That's names that came up. We've got uh, Ackerman, who's, who's a very good coach. Also, both uh, coaching in the Northern Hemisphere. But, but I think. I think the best for South Africa is Zonilistic at the moment. That's where I put my, my money on at the moment. Your thoughts, um, I mean, it, it would be sad if that's looked at as a transformation or a, a quota appointment. And hence I said, I think somebody said, yeah, uh, happy with the transformation conversation. It's not a transformation conversation. This this is a purely rugby conversation, isn't it? Transition conversation. Transition, <laughs> yes. It's, it's a English, pure rugby English. conversation. No, no, no. This has got nothing to do with transformation. <laughs> I'm just happy that there's an opportunity to get the first black right. And hence, I would say it like that. But it's not because uh, he's black that he would get that slot. You heard, Renier. You heard uh, what Lawrence has said. He's earned it. Credibly so. And in front of everybody to see. He's been part of this team. He's been part of this coaching staff. He's worked alongside Drassi, who obviously is still going to be a part of this team for a long time to come, uh, as, 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 as uh, uh, Lawrence told you, from an executive point of view. So with that being said, yeah, it will be exciting to have him there. It will be exciting to have him there. I'd love to hear from you. Please do give us a call. After this, taking your voice notes and your calls. 1850 in the Mighty Metro FM. Let's hear from uh, your voice notes and then taking your calls afterwards. Ferdinand out in Woodbank, you're going to be first up. Hi, Andile. Hey. Happy Paro Paro public holiday. <laughs> <laughs> We're still waiting. <laughs> I watched the game in Middleburg. We're at a stadium. Hey, Bonner. Yeah, the atmosphere. The support of black people, you know, for some who don't even understand the rugby, it wasn't even about that. But the support of our national team, you know, when that two minutes 
kept on dragging. Yeah, the anxiety. Did the two minutes <laughs> drag? It wasn't two minutes it anymore. It was minutes. the point where I ended up sitting down, mm. not even wanting to look at the screen. Mm, mm, mm. You know, I actually cried when I heard the final whistle. Oh. The joy, the, 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 the hiking of strangers. You know, it, it, yeah, it was so beautiful. Beyond the World Cup, you know, even some white guys offered to buy us trains. <laughs> 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 so, yeah, it's doable. It starts with you as a person, you know, Rainbow Nation. I appreciate the story so much. Thank you. Let's play one more. Hey, yeah, ma. Did I know Abu Ile Bavuma? I bet I bet. Hey, start a day, ma. Hey, it's from Bogaz. It's pills and pipe, ma. Yo, two minutes, ma. Two minutes. We are two hours. We are poor. I pay. I pay. We are the same meal. Hey, ma. Ma, poor poor. I'm seven zil, ma. I'm seven zil. I'm poor poor. It is so cold in Pemp, ma. And and I was out there, and I got two little shellite. I got two little shellite. We are bobbing the money. I was just wondering if the players are spinning for. This is the hundred thousand, hundred thousand, hundred thousand each player. So I'm going to play with the pack, ma. Next time for Sasso, this is the hundred, hundred, hundred thousand, hundred thousand. Who am I to name Mali? Django, ma. I appreciate you. Thank you so much. Let's go to the calls. Let's go to Whitbank. Uh, Ferdinand is in Whitbank. Ferdinand, what's it? Hey, ma. How's it? Yeah, no, come not, boy. Where were you? Ish, Brian. Making a little stress. <laughs> so, you know, to go to Kishavila gave me that, ah, get number 11, one hour train, one New Zealand, dancing at three, so you like I bet, left, right, and center. Hmm. Get a kilo de la boko, you can look at the boko. So, put the economics on. Hey, when the final whistle came, what do you know? I can now get him a center, I know. You know what, uh, Mark Tellier has, has, has been one of the standout heroes, special. very special. In that in that final, he was even better. That's the number 11 that you speak of. Absolutely fantastic. Let's go to Mbombela and speak to Sabelo. Sabza. Oh, Sabelo's gone. Terribly sorry there. Uh, let's go to Sean. Is Sabelo there? Sabelo. Hear you. Oh, I can hear you too, my friend. Sorry, I nearly hung up on you. Talk to me. Yes, ma. Uh, for the very first time in my life, ma, uh, I was feeling... A bad play. <laughs> like in a womb fast. Since I was born, my mother was a little bit tired. With the pregnancy pains, boy. <laughs> <laughs> and that was as a lot. After a, a final witness, I saw my droplet tears falling down my heart. Hmm. You know, and the man, he thrills the game, man. I am a game out three, with difference of one point, one point, one point. No, the nasty Lula, who is sitting there in the logo, what manje? See the man Christian, he is the standard of my heart. Samuel, bye bye. Let's go to Sean out in PE. <laughs> Sean, you in Port Elizabeth? I mean, I know how huge rugby is in Port Elizabeth. How are you feeling? Oh, Sean is gone. Uh, we don't have Sean there, so let's move on uh, to Tsekho. Tsekho, you there? I'm Bile Wangolo, that way. Kuku, that way, you're from me. I'm a brother. 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 I'm because at some point hagile france ke tlom mona si ya ke tlom mobella e re tla bona re plan e bea they win, they win my brother. If he if he's at home, my brother, if he's at home, my brother, no. Take a rena, and I'm dealing with the Mukali Makataria EPA, and I'll call him a walk. Hello, 
Tse go ba ba, tse go ba ba. Get all sort of. Eh, ma, ma is down in Cape Town. You know this betting thing. Now I have to wear, I have to wear shorts on TV. Ma, 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 seventy nine minutes point five three. If you watch is on pause. Ay, ma, that is a lot of man doing. Yeah. 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 Thank you so much. I appreciate it. The last no, one is no. going to be coming. Look up in the Pretoria. Uh, how far now? My brother, how far? Hey, no, man. Uh, no wahala here. Yeah, you know, you know, you know, for the first time, I want to speak like me, the way I'm speaking. I want to thank all the South Africans for sharing my videos. My brother, for the first time, you know, I've been doing comedy with Kaiser Chiefs videos, but for the first time, I got South Africa United. People were sharing my videos. Like, I even got supporters and followers from white people in boxing. me say, Cabello, you are motivating us. You are rallying behind my boko boko. Even those that were not even following my poco poco from the videos that I was doing, the donation that people did for me to go to France. Unfortunately, I couldn't get a visa. I want to thank everybody for sharing my videos. Even the ones with the candles. You know what, Ma'a, since I started doing this comedy, this is the first time I feel appreciated and love and people sharing my videos. I want to thank all the South Africans from all the, like, we are united, we are one, we, we've been really and all the games, the, the, the quarterfinals, the semifinals, the finals, I wanted to go and watch it outside, but I was doing it at home so that I can give people content that they will appreciate. Thank you, South Africa, for you for being united and supporting all the blacks. Unfortunately, I couldn't go to Oar Tambo to, to, to welcome the boys, but one day I'll get an opportunity to, to see them live. Kabila GP, I appreciate you and your patronage and just uh, your humility in, 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 in supporting. It's always important that we know who we are in the chain of things. Know when you're a supporter, when you're a player, when you're a coach, and if you're a supporter, do your job too. Support and support hard. Lawrence, it's been a great journey. Hopefully it's not the end. There's still so much to do in this rugby space, especially in educating a lot of us um, who are prominently football people. I appreciate you for coming on. No, Adila, thank you for the platform. Thank you for the relationship as well, uh, because you're a sports person. You seem to click over so easily. Sometimes you forget that you've got veins of soccer balls. Now all of a sudden, <laughs> rugby balls are mixing up in there. Now, I appreciate the, the, the comradery we've got along and this whole time. Hopefully, it's not an end, and we can make it grow, make it work somehow. Looking forward to the future. Indeed. Uh, Renier? Oh, Renier is gone, but I can't wait to have him here to tell no, a story. I'm, I'm, oh, Renier is there. Renier, I'm still around. I can't wait to host oh, you yeah. for for an entire hour and, and, and tell some of the amazing stories that you and I have spoken about here because I think South Africans need to know who you are. They need to know the stories of the things that you, you've you gone through and you've done. Um, I think you, 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 you're a... There's a reason you trended when you spoke on Sport at 10 when I invited you over. And I'd love to carry that on and have you on here. But thank you so much for being with me every single Tuesday here, sharing your talent and your thoughts with us. I really appreciate it. And I'm honored, uh, Andile, I'm honored that, that I could take part in your program. And it was really, as I say, I was, I was, I'm humbled and I'm honored uh, in what we did. And I'm sure that we're going to build rugby more, like you say, uh, the football is going to be uh, make a way a little bit for rugby as well. Hundred percent. And and uh, Lawrence as well. Thank you so much, Lawrence, for your kindness and wise words. We spoke a lot, and it was really nice being on this program. And I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. She's out of here. Thank you so much uh, to Lawrence, and uh, of course to all of you who said, "Hey, Andy, we know nothing about rugby. Please take us on a journey. Let's do it together." And we did. Thank you, South Africa. Um, your support went all the way to France.